they don't know. Yes. <laughs> Update community. So uh, OUA did not send the invitation to this recording. <laughs> So we are troubleshooting by sending emails and social media posting. We just want to give a shout out to brother Stefan and Femi and all the crew. We know that there's a lot of stuff going on. So we're all in this together, about to make the best out of this experience. But it's just, this is beautiful. I love that we're going to have this recording too, to just clip it out of the video and just send that as a gift to OUA fam. Be like, we love y'all. We got this. <laughs> But good idea if you guys didn't want to necessarily post the zoom link you can like post something like on social media saying that the link is on the website and it's up now if you didn't want to post the link on social media directly brilliant okay someone get on ig live of the eop account and just tell people to go to the website okay it's posted on our new admin welcome page and Julian's putting it on our EOP website banner. So hopefully. Remember when we were prepping, we were talking about like, let's get ready for plan B and C, just in case one of us drops off. Why did no one think about the invitation not going out to anyone as a potential plan that we needed to have? <laughs> Welcome, Morgan. We have our first new admit guest. Apologies for our technical difficulties with the Zoom link, but we are so grateful that you found us in the Zoom universe. We are going to wait a couple more minutes before we officially get started, so feel free to hang out, get some snacks. Um, Morgan should get a prize for being- I'm about to say, Mor Morgan just won the first raffle prize. <laughs> our first our first uh, guest for the for the evening. Wait, how do we know that Morgan is with us? Where's the count of participants? Oh, there we go. Attendees is beautiful. Shout out to Haley. So we got Morgan, we got Haley. Oh, yeah, they're coming through. Beautiful. Okay, a quick update from our partners in the Office of Admissions. It looks like they manually just sent another email confirmation. So, yep, and our, and our numbers are rolling in. Welcome, you all. Apologies for the delay in you all receiving the email link um, in true Zoom fashion, you know. But we're here, we're gathering. We're close to 100 folks right now. We're going to wait a couple more minutes to allow our new admits and their family members to join us. Um, so feel free to get some snacks, get some water, stretch a little bit, and then we'll officially start in just a couple minutes. Thank y'all. Yo, these numbers are just climbing. This is beautiful. Yay. Aww. Just picturing everybody where they're joining us from. What's a good count, uh, Yuki, that you want us to get us going at when we hit like 250 or a specific time that you want us to kick off? Let's give it maybe two more minutes to yeah. allow folks. I know we're still sending a couple email responses and updates. We're at about 250 right now, which is great. We're expecting around 700 folks and their loved ones to join us today. So thank y'all for carving time out of your lives to be in community with EOP at UC Berkeley. We'll get Beautiful. started in just a couple minutes. When you have chill hop in the background, you can wait for as long as you need to. The vibes are always smooth and silky.
Thank you to those who are still joining us and logging on. We're gonna get started with our official program welcome in about one minute. Um, apologies, apologies for the confusion and delay in getting the actual meeting link for today's webinar. But we're so happy that you found us and that we're connected right now. We're gonna have a great time in these next couple hours. All right, everyone. I think we are getting close to having most of our guests join us. So we're gonna go ahead and start our official program and welcome again, apologies for the confusion. I know a lot of y'all were sending us emails, trying to find the link, anxious and ready to get connected with you all. Um, in true UC Berkeley fashion, we're starting on Berkeley time, a little something y'all will learn about if you come to join us in the summer and the fall where most of our classes and meetings start at about 10 after just to give us transition and buffer time. So thank you for your grace and understanding. Uh, my name is Yuki Burton. I use she, her pronouns. I serve as the assistant director of the educational opportunity program here at UC Berkeley. I'm also a proud, proud EOP alum from Cal. I came from a first generation low income background and EOP was much of my home and my sanctuary. So I'm excited to be in community with you all and share about our services, share about the ways that we wanna support you in your transition to and through the university. Um, and we also have a dynamic lineup of some awesome speakers y'all from financial aid to our student experiences and faculty panel. We are here to bring you all a taste of the EOP spirit and UC Berkeley um, virtually and in a safe way. So I'll pass it over to my co-host for the evening, my brother, my family member, Ruben, go ahead and introduce yourself. What's up y'all, this is your brother Ruben. I use he, they pronouns. I am also an alumnus of UC Berkeley, came in 2007, graduated 2011. Um, it's my pleasure and my honor to be here with you all. I was uh, born and raised in Southern California and Northern Mexico, Baja specifically, Mexicali, Calexico and the Coachella Valleys. So super grateful to be here. I just wanna give a huge shout out and love to all of you all. Some of you all may be at home surrounded by loved ones or people that believed in y'all were part of your journey. Wanna give a shout out to all of them. I also know that some of you might be uh, outside a, a Taco Bell or a McDonald's tapping into that free Wi-Fi, your local library, and you might be by yourself. So wherever you are, whatever circumstances that you are in, welcome to your new chosen family where we love you all. We are grateful for you all. We've been dreaming about you all. We've been hoping for you all, and we're finally all here together. I just want to kick us off by acknowledging something really quickly. We know that this is pandemic times and that it's impacted many of us personally, familiarly, community, and so on and so forth. So we want to honor the lives and experiences that have been shaped by the pandemic. In a parallel universe, we would all be safely in person celebrating each other. And we're grateful for your presence here with us. And we're excited to make this one of the most special experiences together, which it already is because you all don't even get the invite. So shout out to you all for making it through a party where the invite wasn't sent out. That's some VIP level shit right there. So just want to celebrate you all, lift you all and say congratulations for being admitted to UC Berkeley. It is our honor to be here with y'all. I'm going to pass the mic over to um, Yuki after we honor this land acknowledgement. For those of us, I just want to lift and celebrate the fact that we are on native land. Native and indigenous community took care of this planet before colonization. They are still taking care of this planet today. And the future includes a world 
where all native and indigenous communities will be healthy and have an opportunity to thrive through dignity and respect. So with that, we want to pass the mic over to Sister Yuki. Thanks so much, Ruben. Um, some other disclaimers that we want to share. This session is being recorded just so that we can share it with those who aren't able to join us um, in real time today. Um, this is a webinar, so you can see us and hear us, but we cannot see you. So get comfortable. You might be on your bed, on your couch, in your pajamas. That is totally okay. Um, there will be opportunities for you all to engage with us through the technology throughout the program. I know you see some faces already on the screen. Some of our awesome student leaders and staff partners, they'll introduce themselves throughout um, the program as well. Uh, we also have a closed captioning service that you'll see on the bottom as well. So just keep that in mind um, and feel free to use as needed. I know some of y'all are already entering questions in the chat, which is awesome. We are gonna try to answer as many questions as we can today. Um, so feel free to continue to use that, engage in it. The first half of our program really is us gonna be sharing um, some of the, the services, the overview of campus life and EOP. And then the last half will be the live Q&A where we will allow y'all to join us, share your questions and feedback and things of that sort. So you understand kind of the journey that we'll be on tonight as well. Uh, before we jump into the official program, again, just want to give deep gratitude for all y'all and joining us today. As Ruba mentioned, it has been such a challenging year, to say the least, for many of us and our family members. Um, and we just want to honor and celebrate each and every one of you. This is the most diverse incoming class that Berkeley has had in years with an increase in first generation, low income, students of color. And we know that we share in the excitement with you and celebrating this phenomenal accomplishment. Um, but there's also mixed emotions and that's okay. So this word cloud was from your registration responses of what was the, the word that's most present for you in thinking about your Berkeley admissions. And I just wanna call some out the, the excitement, feeling nerves, feeling pride, um, anxiety or anxiousness is real as well, right? There's a lot of questions that come up. How am I gonna pay for this? What does this mean for my family members and loved ones? And those are some of the real talk um, and truths that we're gonna speak to today. Our goal is not to sell you on Berkeley, is not to sell a dream to you. Our goal is to share the community, the love, the authenticity, and the warmth that our EOP family has for you all and that the door is open. So you and your loved ones can make the most informed decision and make a decision that's best for you. Right, so we're gonna walk you through a lot of information. It might feel overwhelming at times and that's okay, y'all. That's why we have it recorded so you can watch it and share it with your family members, press, press, press pause and play. Um, but we just wanna name all of the feelings that you might have in this moment as well. We're also at a really unique time right now, I think as a community and collectively, and we'd be remiss um, not to acknowledge and give space for just the complex, feelings and energies that we're feeling even in this last week. Um, I think in our world experiencing multiple pandemics from public health to, to racism, to attacks in our communities of color, um, we wanna acknowledge that joy and grief can coexist at the same time. So we welcome you and all of the energies, all of the complexities and nuances that you might be feeling. Um, we wanna extend also a lot of love to our Muslim community and offer you all greetings um, in saying Ramadan Mubarak in the start of your holy month. We hope that it is deeply reflective and meaningful for you all. Um, and we also acknowledge that as you all are processing your admissions, Berkeley, admissions decision to Berkeley and all the awesome choices that you have, there's also very real tragedies happening across our communities in real time. I know my heart is heavy in thinking about the lost lives to police brutality within the Black community, the anti-Asian violence that many of us are still experiencing and coping through. Um, so it can be hard to hold the grief um, that's happening in real time with also this shared excitement and anxiety and thinking about your transition to college in the next year. But in EOP, we love all parts of you. We welcome all pieces of your journey. Um, so we just wanna acknowledge and give space for that, that we can hold these complex emotions. Um, and they're, we're right here in solidarity with you all. So I think it's even more meaningful to be connected virtually um, and sharing this offering from Grace Lee Boggs the only way to survive is by taking care of each other. 
And regardless of what is going on in our world, on our campus, in our communities, EOP's commitment to you all is that we're gonna treat you with the love, respect, and understanding and unlimited compassion that each of us deserves in our own humanity. So our goal is to share the ways that we're gonna take care of you, take care of your questions, take care of your thoughts and feelings as we go through this journey. So with that said, I'm going to pass it over to my brother Ruben um, to introduce the next piece. Absolutely. Sorry, I got caught up like, y'all, we got people in Bolivia right now. We got people out of state. We got people like all over the world in this space with us. That's absolutely incredible. So just saying a shout out and love to everyone. I was over here talking about parking lots and being at home. People are like international and out of the state. So that's incredible. So, um, so much is the love and the lifting and the value of us as an EOP community at Berkeley, that we have a special message that was recorded for you all from our very own leader, Chancellor Chris, who is the first woman identified chancellor in the history of UC Berkeley. We want to lift and celebrate that we need more women and femme folks in positions of leadership. So with that, let's click that play button and get this message from our leader. Good afternoon. I'm UC Berkeley's Chancellor, Carol Christ. And it's my great pleasure to welcome and celebrate all of you. I know how much hard work it took to get here, and I have nothing but respect for the challenges you have surmounted during the difficult year we have all endured. I know how hard families have been hit by the pandemic and its economic and emotional consequences. I'm also certain that like me, You've been deeply moved by how COVID-19 has highlighted and amplified deep racial and socioeconomic disparities in our country. I want you to know that our campus community stands in solidarity with all who are today fighting for justice and equity in our country. Even in normal times, the best of times, getting admitted to Cal is a major accomplishment and it doesn't happen by accident or good luck. We spend a great deal of time and effort reviewing every single application. And if you're here with us today, it's because we know without doubt that we want you to be part of our community and that you have all the tools and talents necessary to take full advantage of what will be a mind expanding education and a life changing experience. The fact that you've persevered throughout the year that has passed makes me all the more certain that you have what it takes. At the same time, we know that the idea of coming to a place like Cal can seem daunting, even a little intimidating. But remember, you did not arrive at this moment of success on your own, and nor will you be on your own during your time with us, because we know how important the support and encouragement you received from friends and family was. We'll do everything in our power to make sure you receive the support you need on the road ahead. That's why programs and services like our educational opportunity program and undocumented student program are so important. Many of the staff members were once, like you, first generation students or from low income families. So they understand what it means to be in your shoes, to deal with the challenges you may be managing. And that's why we urge you to connect with and seek guidance from them as you begin your Berkeley journey. They're dedicated to one thing and one thing only, your success and well-being in your academic pursuits, your extracurricular activities, and every other aspect of your college career. We believe that providing and sustaining a true sense of belonging for every student, no matter their origins or identity, is an essential element of a world-class education. Berkeley's excellence depends on diversity of thought and perspective, both of which are the result of and profoundly enhanced by the diversity of our campus community. For these and so many other reasons, we're working hard to increase the diversity of our community to ensure that everyone particularly those from historically underrepresented backgrounds, feel safe, welcome, and respected always and everywhere. 
we have a particularly strong commitment towards recruiting and enrolling students who are the first in their family to attend college and students from low-income backgrounds and underrepresented communities. Last fall, we admitted the most diverse class in many years. Our African American initiative is helping to bring more black students to Cal. We're on the path to becoming a Hispanic serving institution by 2027, and we will continue to condemn and confront anti-Asian violence and sentiment head on. Berkeley has also launched a number of important efforts and initiatives designed to ensure that we're a welcoming, anti-racist institution in every regard. As a Berkeley student, you will be surrounded by students who, like you, bring remarkable intelligence, energy, ambition, resilience, creativity, and an eagerness to challenge the status quo and reimagine the future. You will have the opportunity to explore anything and everything. Whether you're interested in the sciences or the humanities, the arts or engineering, Berkeley will offer you an unparalleled experience that combines a unique depth and breadth of academic excellence with a deep passion for exploring and engaging the world around us. I look forward to welcoming you to this wonderful community next fall. All right, so with those welcoming remarks, we also want to give space for one of our student alum to send you all greetings and welcoming on behalf of EOP. So this is one of my favorite students of all time, Jay Johnson, who was a, an awesome EOP student leader, a member of the Berkeley Hope Scholars, and graduated last year with a degree in molecular and cell biology. Um, Jay, has, Jay is an artist and has some beautiful spoken word remarks that they're gonna share with you that will probably speak to some of the feelings y'all might have right now of you know, uncertainty, not knowing, you know, sometimes some of the doubts that come up when we get our admissions offer and what does that really mean for my next step? So we have a brief message from Jay to ground us in our community time today. Hi everyone, my name's Jay, Kwa Jay, but I go by Jay, she, they pronouns. Uh, yeah, this is my fifth year. This is it for me. It's going full circle, Yuki. We've been rocking for a long time and it's really evident uh, for those watching that EOP really sticks with you throughout your process if you open up that door and really take advantage of the resources and the fact that it's a family. Um, so for me, um, uh, I'm first generation, former foster youth. I spent 18 years of my life in foster care and EOP was central to the snowball effect of my involvement in community and access to other campus resources. Um, it seemed like after meeting Yuki and SIR to Berkeley, I then met the Berkeley Hope Scholars Program for former false youth and the California Youth Connection, which really spearheaded my research and involvement in politics. And then the Biology Scholars Program, which I'm repping right here, and EOP STEM for those who are underrepresented in the STEM community. These are all sources that kind of branched out from my involvement in EOP. So here's a little bit of wisdom to offer to those um, who are watching. So one quote that really stuck with me throughout this whole college experience is, what the mind can perceive and believe, the mind can achieve. Many students are burdened with the misconception that they don't belong here. Academics are challenging, regardless of the front some may put forth, and that front itself can be especially difficult for first-generation students. Students may struggle with learning how to learn, and this includes learning their resources for tutoring, taking notes, study habits, or being compensated for test anxieties. The CE3 and specifically the EOP department is avid about mentoring those who are new to college classes and different environments so that they may reach a realization of their own potential and move forward in their fields of interest. Too often people show what they know and hide what they don't and that hinders, hinders peers more often than it helps them. It's important to step back and help one another because that brings a genuine sense of unity and that's something that I really saw in EOP. So one, advocate for yourself and if you don't, Find, if you don't know how, find someone who will. And EOP is a great office to start. Two, never let yourself settle for less, because less may be what you know, but trust you're worth the best. Three, really you're worth a chance, and when offered, I hope you take it, but spreading yourself thin, that's not how you're gonna make it. Four, ground yourself in something deep. It can't be uprooted by power outages or pandemic influence. Five, 
Your lineage is deeply rooted, worth celebrating. Even if you don't get the chance to walk that stage at graduation, we live in stages. You got control. You are the stage. In some ways, are already paid. Six, understand the difference between self-love and selfish. And with that, never hesitate to put yourself first. Seven, the key is boundaries. And that's something you're going to learn. Because I offer wisdom, but some lessons are learned. Eight, Love and make time for those who love and care for you, for the systems that nurture you, for the ancestors that carry you, and for you. I hope you're there for you. Nine, and if you still find yourself isolated and alone, convinced you don't belong, know that you are wrong, and maybe it's on you to create and cultivate the environment and network you need. Do it, because chances are you're not the only one who needs what you can build, create, and offer. Ten, take chances so you can make generational strides and take it further. And if I could live this life over again, I wouldn't change it. Since 15, I've been in classes while mama caged in. I grew impatient, just wanted to be liberated. But she been in and out ever since she been on probation. I cracked a smile, but that was all for motivation. They thought I couldn't handle the pressure, but I amazed them. There's always been a light at the end, so I've been chasing, my mind racing. I'm determined to really make it. Never going back to the bottom, I'm groundbreaking. I'm out the pavement, built to follow a path to greatness. We're game changing. We some victims of a system that was built on hatred. We gonna make it, just be patient. This entire experience has been a blessing as I reflect and prepare to transition out of Berkeley. I'm blessed to be able to look back and see that I was once in a place where I was not seen or could not exist, forcing myself to squeeze into boxes, only feeling allowed to live in fragments, but by choosing to love and be afforded the opportunity to create and cultivate space where all of me could exist. I have exuded that energy and I hope it reached many students who are on a journey to loving themselves fully. Thank you all for listening. You are in for a treat as my team here gets into the details of all the things that make Berkeley EOP and CO3 exceptional resources for you if you choose us. Hi everyone, my name I always love, love, love um, that poem that that we were blessed with by Jay because it always gets me going. And as uh, as y'all heard, this is an incredible family of folks that are really committed to every single one of you. And one of the major spaces that holds multiple units dedicated to specific student populations is what we call CE3 or the Centers for Educational Equity and Ancillates. Remember the name and put respect on the name, Centers for Educational Equity and Excellence, hint, hint, remember the name. So the next, uh, the next, um, what we want to lift for you all, so help you understand that because many of these programs and services don't really exist in the communities that we come from, but we have folks that are dedicated to first generation, low income students, undocumented students, former and current foster youth, veterans, reentry students that are that are, that are folks who started and had to leave and are returning or are older than your traditional student population that comes from high school. We also have our student parent center for students that have dependents that are parenting. We have the Miller Scholars Program, Student Support Services and Transfer Student Center that are really dedicating to make sure that our community has the wraparound support that they need when they're coming from community college. What we wanna make sure to um, share with you all is in the next slide, which is we're hosting a virtual answer desk. So we're inviting you all this Thursday, April 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. Visit c3.berkeley.edu slash new dash admins to sign up for you all to come with your specific questions for any of these programs and services. So you get to know folks, start warming up, start creating connections, and that you can build off of an additional conversation that you'll have with them super excited and hopefully we'll see as many of you all as possible we're inviting you all to sign up so that you all don't have to worry about not getting an invite like today that's serving some tea for the people that were supposed to send the invite for today shout out okay back to you yuki thank you for the tea Ruben. um so on the next slide we are going to answer some of the questions that are already coming through the chat we see y'all sending us questions we're going to try to get to all of them but I know a lot of y'all are first wondering, like, what is ELP? Y'all sent me this email, this welcome. I'm here. I'm on the Zoom link. Um, the next couple of minutes, we're going to overview our comprehensive services. Uh, like Ruben said, ELP is one of the many programs that make up the CE3 family. 
Each of you received a special VIP welcome from us, which means that you are identified as an EOP student at UC Berkeley. There's no application you need to do. Um, we identified your eligibility based off of your UC application. So it's important to know at different campuses that EOP definition can vary. Here at UC Berkeley, as long as you are any one of these three, either a first generation college student, meaning you're the first in your family to pursue a four year university degree, low income, and we define that as a student who receives Pell Grant or Dream Aid in their financial aid application and or a historically underrepresented student. So if you are any one of these three, and we saw that on your UC application, we handpicked you and said, hey, we wanna to talk to y'all, we wanna be in community with you, you are EOP. There's not an application you need to do you all. You got the email, you're already vibing with us, we're here in community today. So some important things that we wanna overview for you all is just understanding the services that we provide. EOP really prides ourselves on, off on offering from a holistic standpoint, meaning that we know that your identity as a student as a newly admitted EOP student is one of the multiple layers to who you are. Many of you are family members, you have responsibilities back home, you have different intersecting identities and we wanna welcome and embrace that in your Berkeley journey. So we really offer students comprehensive support from academic counseling and academic counseling, we are trained across all of the different colleges. So that can be academic planning. A lot of y'all are submitting questions asking about, you know, what classes do I sign up for? How many units? How do I understand how to switch colleges? Those are things that an EOP counselor is more than happy to walk you through and help make sure that you're set up for success with a balanced schedule going into the fall. We're also trained across financial aid. So we can answer questions on your Cal Central if you are trying to understand your net costs and loans and work study and how do I find scholarships, right? Sylvia is going to overview an amazing presentation that's probably going to answer a lot of those questions, but know that we work in partnership with our financial aid and scholarships office so we can help walk you through some of those those issues and questions as well. We also offer some limited scholarships, fee waivers and grants. These are all posted on our website, so we'll refer you all there for more information. Um, and then we also have a host of different student leadership opportunities. We know that your experience in the classroom is one aspect, but we want to make sure that you all are plugged into developmental opportunities that are gonna help you thrive and step out of your comfort zone as a leader. So whether that's different campus organizations, internships, research, those are opportunities that EOP can connect you with as well. Um, we're also trained in supporting students through graduate school exploration and career opportunities. So we know that as you're entering, some of y'all are already thinking about, you know, what's, what's my opportunities on the job market? What's next after Cal, right? How do I set up a pathway to be most successful for me and my family? We want to support you not just in the transition to, but also through and beyond Cal as well. Um, and more than anything, y'all, just please know if you haven't already gotten this vibe and this feeling already through this Zoom call, we're here to love on y'all. We're here to offer you encouragement for to be a place to listen to any and all of your questions. I know when I was a first gen student coming to Berkeley, I was nervous to advocate for myself, to ask for help because I thought it would be a silly question or was I supposed to know that already? Um, there is no question too big or too small for you to come to us with. We can support you in creating a four-year plan or we can help you understand how to put you know, money on your Cal One card to do your laundry. That is what we're here to walk you through the whole college process and know that you're not alone. Berkeley has over 40% students who of the undergraduate population who are EOP eligible. So there are other first gen low income students of color that we wanna make sure that you're plugged in with to build community and belonging, especially during these times as well. Um, I also wanna give a huge shout out to our EOP STEM program. This was started in 2014 by a group of student leaders who were declared or interested in the STEM field. So science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And what this has blossomed into is really a rich community of scholars who offer mentorship and femtorship to one another. They do different professional development activities. And really the goal is to create a sense of belonging, especially in some of our STEM academic spaces that can feel more isolating, or maybe you don't see as many folks of color in those classrooms. We really, really wanna make sure that folks are plugged in that you know who your study group resources are, that we can share information and be in community and not in competition, okay? So this is linked on our website. If you go to eop.berkeley.edu, you will see so much information about how to connect. Just click that um, the apply button at the top and that's how you'll get plugged into their 
um, monthly listservs. So you'll know about programs and events happening going into the fall semester. We take students, you know, hopefully fingers crossed when we're able to be in person, there's different uh, company visits and professional development trips. So we've taken students to Google, to Dropbox, to Kaiser, different companies who are recruiting actively and trying to find dynamic EOP students like you all. And some students have even been able to get internships on the spot just from some of those networking opportunities. So if you are thinking about STEM, if you're curious about STEM, if you wanna learn more about STEM, connect with this program and this community you all. You do not have to be declared officially in STEM. This is, we're trying to recruit and build more community for, for these student populations as well. Um, and one final um, shout out and plug, we most recently started a new subset of this program called the SSS STEM Scholars Program. So this is a more intimate cohort. If you're looking for more one-on-one -on -one opportunities, um, there's an application process throughout the year and you'll be in community with a set group of students, um, as well as having your own designated EOP STEM advisor to walk you through the academic journey. So again, just a small snapshot of some of our services here at EOP. Um, some of you all have already browsed through our new admin welcome page. That might have been how you found the link for today. Um, there is a new admin resource guide that goes through a wealth of the different programs, student organizations, support services that uh, Berkeley has to offer. So we really encourage you all to check it out. It's interactive. It will link to the different pages as well. So keep an eye out for the new admin resource guide. And now I'm going to pass it over to Ruben. I know that was a lot of information in a short amount of time, y'all. We're trying to really make space for our student speakers later. Um, so feel free to continue sending your follow-up questions in the chat. Thank you so much for that, uh, Yuki. I appreciate you. I could listen to you reading out the phone book and be super educated and enjoy my time. So um, just wanted to add, add to these resources that we have for you all, fam. We're also very clear that many of us may not be only worried about the academic experience, the virtual experience, the in-person experience, but some of us have just some core basic needs that we wanna make sure that we're gonna have support when we come to Berkeley. So I wanna confirm to you all, affirm and celebrate that you're gonna be coming into Berkeley in the most robust and advanced model of our UC Berkeley basic needs efforts. We've learned substantially before COVID, through COVID, and we're ready to create hybrid resources for those of you that might stay wherever it is that you are or might be mobile, but won't be near on or on campus. And for all of you who will, will be on campus, we're going to have direct services to support your financial, food, housing, healthcare, mental health, transportation, and unique needs of some of us that may be parenting or disabled. So we just wanted to celebrate that name that and some of you all right now maybe with loved ones who they don't really care about what school because frankly they don't even know about what Berkeley is I didn't know what Berkeley was when I got into Berkeley to be honest with you all you know I was that student that people would be like yo congrats on getting into Cal and I was like what the fuck I got into Berkeley not Cal like what is I didn't get into a Cal State because I didn't know that Cal and Berkeley were the same thing that's a branding problem to be honest with y'all but don't get me started on that conversation all I'm saying is that for some of us, the communities that we come from, our loved ones aren't thinking about academics. They just wanna make sure that we're gonna be cared for and that our basic needs are gonna be met. And we're here to confirm to you all that we have a whole basic needs center and there's a vast team and community ready to take care and support your basic needs. Thank you so much, Ruben. And again, the Basic Needs Center is one of the many partnerships that EOP has. So we offer weekly drop-in hours and partnership where they come to our physical space on campus uh, because we want to support y'all holistically. It's not just about the classroom and majors and grades. We want to make sure that you get the most out of your Berkeley experience. And that's what we're here for. So before we go into some of our speakers, I know that a lot of folks have questions and anxieties or uncertainties about the fall. And we want to normalize that, to affirm it, to welcome it. Um, it's been a challenging last year navigating this pandemic and so many other things going on in our world, um, especially for you all who, you know, were, were finishing out your senior year and had a lot of 
changes, a lot of ambiguity. So on this slide, we're sharing some of the most recent up-to-date information about Berkeley's plans for the fall semester. Please note that these plans are tentative, right? There's things that could happen and shift and change throughout the summer, but we wanted to make it clear as of April, 2021, what some of our campus guidelines are. So for the fall semester, fall 2021, the campus has announced that the default mode of instruction will be in person. Um, this is an exception for classes that have over 200 students or more that will continue to be remote, but there are plans, you know, tentative to public health guidelines, plans for fall 2021 being in person. More information will surely be shared throughout the summer. Um, if there are changes, it's really important to be checking your emails. I know as new admits, you get a lot of emails, a lot of notifications, um, but it's an important way of staying abreast to any changes that might be coming up. Now, if there's any students on here um, who have medical conditions or might need certain accommodations, we really encourage you to advocate for your needs. We know that it's not a cookie cutter, you know, one shoe fits all. So please make sure that you are aware of our disabled students program, or you might hear it referred to as DSP. They can assist you in creating an accommodation plan. An EOP counselor can also help you navigate that process. Um, you're also encouraged to contact your department or the school that you were admitted through as well. In terms of on-campus housing, um, this is language pulled from the campus housing website, which is housing.berkeley.edu. So for newly admitted students, you will receive priority in the campus housing application process, so long as you fill out the application and meet all the deadlines. However, it's important to note that they, at this present moment, they cannot guarantee an offer for newly admitted students. Um, so we encourage folks to explore all your different housing options, which might be, you know, whether you're still living with relatives, if you're nearby in the Bay Area, if that's looking into off-campus options. Um, one deadline to be mindful of is May 2nd. That is the FROSH deadline for the campus housing application. Okay, so May 2nd. May 1st is your deadline to accept your offer of admissions to UC Berkeley, and that's through your My Application Portal. And May 2nd is the housing application deadline. Um, regardless of what happens in these coming months, y'all, EOP is here to walk hand in hand with you through this process. Um, we are doing our best to stay abreast to campus updates and changes. This is the information that we wanna share with you all now, but continue again to check your websites check your emails for any important updates. Um, and in terms of connecting with the EOP counselor, know that there will be different opportunities beyond this call. So this is a high level overview of our services, but we will also in the summer have some different enrollment workshops to support y'all. So another date to save is July 15th. That is the date that you will be enrolling for your fall classes and EOP will have some programming and workshops to help y'all pick a balanced schedule uh, that makes most sense for you and your needs. Um, and in August, EOP will also be hosting a new student welcome in partnership with the Undocumented Student Program. So that will be an opportunity for, for you to meet other incoming students to learn more about our fall programming and resources. So know this is not just the one time that you're gonna connect with us. Um, newly admitted students are encouraged to connect with EOP for academic counseling after you one, accept your offer of admission. So by that May 1st deadline, and also we really, really encourage new students to complete your Golden Bear advising modules. You'll learn a little more information about that. You'll, you probably will see info about your Golden Bear orientation in your Cal Central portal, but your Golden Bear advising or GBA is gonna go through so much great information and content about classes, enrollment, how to navigate creating a schedule. Once you go through that information, we're happy to connect with you all as well. Um, but you can continue to send any timely or urgent questions to EOP new admit at berkeley.edu, okay? So a lot of information. Again, we're gonna piece through it and walk through it step-by-step step together, all right? So with that said, I know that was a ton of info. We started on Berkeley time. Some folks might need a stretch break to move around, to drink some water. Um, we are going to bring up some of the energy and start our first raffle for the evening. So we are raffling off Amazon gift cards tonight. So get your fingers ready. I'm gonna pass it over to Ruben to go over the instructions for our first raffle. All right, y'all. So we got this first raffle for you all. 
which for us, we want to make sure that everyone is going to be using the Q&A function. So find the Q&A function in the bottom of your Zoom window. And when I ask you the question for the raffle prize, the first student that answers correctly will be awarded the raffle prize. And the team here is gonna let me know who that is. So you're going to put the answer in the Q&A. You're going to make sure that your name, you have your name and you have your email so that we can follow up with you to get you that raffle prize. But some of you all might be joining from a different Zoom account and it's not even your name. So we don't want to assume that that's your name in the Zoom account. That's why we're asking you to add your name, your email, and then the answer to the raffle question. So I'm just going to let that simmer and then we're going to get it on. I have three rounds. There are three raffle prizes. Each one has a unique question. So round number one, get ready. Question number one is, wait, team, y'all ready? Y'all ready? Because I feel like hella, hella, hella answers about to come through. So the first one, here we go. Here, the team gave me the thumbs up. Here we go. First question, raffle prize. Get ready, y'all. Hope you clicked already in the Q&A. Have your, your, your little text box ready. First question is, what does EOP stand for? What does EOP stand for? Team, I feel like we got the wrong situation in this slide with the whole ass answer is at the top of the slide. Who, who made this decision? <laughs> okay, what does EOP stand for? See those answers blowing up down there. <laughs> this is a giveaway raffle. Why'd someone come up with a different name for EOP when the answer is on the slide? That's going to be hilarious. All right, Erica, Daisy, do we have our winner? Yes, yeah, so we have a winner, uh, Mary Jane Mills. And she's oh. an educational opportunity program. <laughs> shout out, shout out, Mary Jane. Congratulations on being our first raffle prize winner. Okay, here we go. Question number two. Get ready, y'all. Here's question number two. List one CE3 program besides EOP. List one CE3 program besides EOP. I'm gonna let the team look at, yo, these, num these answers are coming in hot. Okay, who's the winner? Leilani Hernandez. Leilani, Leilani Hernandez, congratulations. Shout out to you and yours. Whenever you get your raffle prize, you decide if you share it or you just keep it to yourself. We're not gonna judge you. That's your whole last prize for yourself, okay. Here we go, y'all. Third and final raffle prize. Get ready. Here we go. The third and final raffle prize is list two of the services that EOP provides. List two of the services that EOP provides. Y'all let me know when we're ready to announce the winner. I need some help, y'all. My laptop just froze and I cannot scroll through the Q&A. <laughs> <laughs> Erica, what's up? Where you at, Erica? I was scrolling. It keeps going up and I'm going to go with the names that I see. Okay. Abigail Corsio. Abigail, shout out to Abigail. Congratulations on being our third and final round winner. We do have one more raffle later on in the program, but I want to give a huge shout out to our winners of our first raffle for today's event. We're going to continue the program, y'all, especially after our eventful start, just to make sure that we're staying on track and we're keeping the flow. I am too excited right now. I am too excited right now 
to introduce to you all one of the most phenomenal and legendary EOP alumna and financial aid leaders, not just in Berkeley, not just in Berkeley, but across the UC system, the state of California, and the country who is out there advocating for economic justice on behalf of all college students. And we have the honor and privilege of having Silvia Marquez, Associate Director of Financial Aid and Scholarship with us. You cannot find a better ambassador of Stockton, California. Don't even be surprised by the greatness that's about to come out of Silvia who's going to break down and explain to us, what is this financial aid world? How do I understand it? How do I navigate it? All these haters are telling me that I can't afford and go to Berkeley. So let's put all of those haters, fear and doubt to rest for a moment. And let's just embrace and bring to the stage our absolutely phenomenal and luminous, glowing and gold and yellow today, Sylvia Marquez. The mic is yours. The space is yours, Sylvia. Thank you so much for being here with us. I feel like I should just stop now and end on a good note. <laughs> I'm gonna turn it back over to y'all. Um, thank you for being here, everyone. My name is Sylvia Marquez, as Ruben said. I use she, her, Aya, uh, Associate Director. I've been involved with this campus for about 30 years now um, in some way, shape, or form. Um, as Ruben said, I, I'm an EOP alum, I'm a Cal alum, and Ruben, I'm with you because I did not know that Cal and Berkeley were the same thing for about a good year as a student, so I'm with you. Um, my hope today, I have 15 minutes, I'm gonna start my timer right now. Um, I have a lot of information to, to give you all today. And honestly, my hope today is, is just to give you as much information as possible because I, we want all of you to make informed decisions about what you're going to do um, come fall and which school you want to attend. And I'm going to be as transparent as I can be because it is more important that you have the right information as you move forward. So I'm not going to sugarcoat it and we're just going to get going on this. Um, if, you, if you could move us to the next slide, please. Thank you. One of the most important things that I want to make sure that you all understand today is that we're your partners in all of this. That doesn't necessarily mean that we're gonna be able to fund you fully um, in grants and scholarships. My goal again is to make sure that you all understand what your role is, what our role is. We're gonna shake every federal, state and institutional tree to get as much money for you as possible. Um, and then just make sure you have the information you need. Make sure you understand what your responsibility is in this, what your parent may be if you're a dependent and how we are here to support you. Um, I want to start with the cost of attendance. Um, and, you know, if you're ever wondered how we figure out how much financial aid you might need in one academic year, this cost of attendance or is just another way to say your budget is sort of the foundation for us to figure out how much financial aid you might need. And then the information we got from your application, um, whether that's a FAFSA or a DREAM Act application, helps us determine what types of financial aid we might provide you. And so a couple of things that I wanna point out on this slide. First is that I have not included the non-resident tuition portion. Um, so this represents California students. Um, and we can talk a little bit more about non-resident tuition, but this um, budget is broken up into two sections. The top section is your direct costs. So these are the things that we would charge you for directly. So tuition, once you enroll, um, everyone gets charged tuition, whether it's half a unit or 20 units. We would also charge you for housing if you choose to live on campus with us, whether that's a residence hall, apartment, or family housing. So there are those types of expenses that you're going to have as a student at Berkeley. There are also other expenses you're going to have just by the very nature of being a student. So things like food, books, personal, transportation, you just have those expenses because you're a student. You need to eat, you need to buy books, you need to get to and from campus or and home. And so those are expenses you will have. You're more in control of those expenses um, based on where you live, how you buy books, rent, borrow, um, how much you spend on personal items, those sorts of things. Once we add those two areas of expenses together, that helps us figure out how much financial aid you might need for one academic year. Um, and then the last thing I will say is please don't get stuck on the number at the bottom. 
which is the overall cost of attendance. Again, it's how much you might need. That doesn't necessarily mean that's the amount that you would owe the university. So let's not get stuck there. Yuki, if we can go to the next slide. A um, couple of things that are really important about this. If you've gone in and taken a look at your financial aid, this should look familiar. This is Cal Central. It is your portal for everything, financial aid registration and billing, um, along with some other information from new student services. But the first thing I wanna point out in the middle, Yuki, if you could click, is the cost of attendance. So this is your budget. Again, this helps us figure out how much financial aid you need in total. So grants, loans, scholarships, work study. Um, the other really important piece about Cal Central is looking at your gift aid. So if you could click again, Yuki. And again, this is not a full screenshot. This is just a portion of the Cal Central financial aid page. But what you'll see is you have um, you may be eligible for, for gift aid, which are grants and scholarships. And we call them gift aid because those are the types of awards that you would not pay back like you would a loan, for example. Um, and so the difference between these two amounts. So in this particular example for ASCII, you would see that there's gift aid of almost 30,000, but the cost of attendance is 39. So there's a bit of a difference there. So right now on the surface, this doesn't look like Oski has enough money for what his potential expenses may be for one year. So if you could click again, Yuki, the difference between what it could cost you for one year and the amount of grants and scholarships is called the net cost. We know that you all have a ton of options right now that you are considering. It could be Berkeley, it could be some other school that you are considering right now. The net cost is going to be a really important piece of you figuring out which school gave you the best offer. So just because the school is more expensive doesn't necessarily mean that it's out of reach for you. And so um, knowing what the net cost is, is really important. You can, if you could click one more time. On our campus and within any UC school, and we'll talk a little bit more about this in a minute, um, how we make up the net cost is typically in the forms of loans and work study. And that's what's important here when you're looking at Cal Central. Typically what you'll see is your net cost is a certain amount and then your loans and work study should make up that difference. And so that is one of the key pieces of information as you're considering how you're going to um, compare. We could go to the next slide, Yuki. Oh, I wanna make sure that you also see your tasks that are here. You'll see them in a few places in Cal Central, but please take a look at these tasks and try and get them done as soon as possible. So I was going back to, um, I wanna go back to the net cost for a second because um, looking at our portal, it may look totally different from what you're seeing at other schools. And so how do you compare um, in a consistent way and understand what one school is offering versus the other? So this image here is um, the college financing plan and so every school that offers you federal aid should have something that looks like this. And so you can put these side by side to, and look at that net cost number because that's likely the amount of loan and work study that a school is offering you. That's the number that you wanna compare from school to school. And so I wanna be really clear that it's not necessarily the amount that you would owe the university, it is just the amount of your expenses that is not covered by grants and scholarships. I hope that is clear, but this is really a tool. And so we can go to the next slide. I wanna talk a little bit about the UC system um, because as a system, what you can expect, the vast majority of our students should expect that there are going to be loans and work study in your financial aid package. As much as we would love to fund everyone in grants and scholarships up to their financial need, we're just not in a position to do that as a public institution. And so I wanna be really, really clear about that. Um, and what's on this slide um, provides you more information. So the amount of loan and work in your package is going to vary from school to school, um, from UC campus to UC campus. And the amount of that loan and work study could change from year to year, even within the same campus. And so, what I'm showing you here is the current amount of loan and work, which is $10,000. For next year, when you come in as freshmen, it goes down a little bit. So it can change from year to year. And um, so it's just important to know these things. The amount of grant and scholarship you get can change from year to year. 
Um, it can depend on where you live. It can depend if you're a resident or not. So there are a number of factors that come into play here. Um, and so what a lot of our students do, if we can go to the next slide, is um, rather than borrowing, rather than working, our students are amazing in that they bring in over $10 million a year in outside scholarships. And so our commitment to our students is if you can bring in outside scholarships from some external entity, we'll reduce your subsidized loan and work study first. And what you would see is that that net cost is likely to go down. We want you to maximize all of the free money that you are eligible for. So all those grants and scholarships, plus the money you bring in with you um, to make this as affordable as possible. Um, there are going to be a handful of exceptions around that, um, that goal. But the vast, for the vast majority of students, we end up reducing loans and work study so that you don't borrow and you don't work if you don't have to. And that holds true for the other UC campuses as well. So it's good to know that. Um, if we can go to the next slide. So we're also being very cognizant that um, we are in going through several pandemics right now. Um, and many of those have impacted, those experiences have impacted our um, financial ability, right? And so can you do appeals? Yes, there are lots of these questions in the chat. We do allow for appeals. Um, I wanted to also be very transparent on this slide to say what things we can consider and what we cannot consider. And so things like a loss of income, reduction of income, changes in your family and your household size, those sorts of things we can consider for sure. The things that we can't so consumer debt, bankruptcies, those sorts of things, parents refusal um, to provide information or provide support. Those aren't typically things that we can consider. There are a few exceptions there that we can talk about. Um, but the other things that I wanna be very transparent about what we can't consider, we can't negotiate based on what another school offered you. Um, if your expected family contribution, otherwise known as your EFC is zero, an appeal is not going to help you. Um, the EFC can't go lower than zero, which means that your aid would not change. And then the third thing I wanna be super clear about, um, we've had a lot of these questions in the chat, is about residency status. And so appealing to the financial aid office for additional or for any grants and scholarships as a non-resident student is not something we consider. Unfortunately, this is one population of students that we do not fund well on our campus um, and within the UC system because of UC Regent policy. Um, and so it's important to know that before you come to Berkeley and commit to Berkeley. It's important that you have a financial plan for the next several years that you are on our campus if you're a non-resident student. So I wanna be totally transparent about that. Our appeals will be available on May 1st, starting on May 1st online, and the website is there at the bottom. You can go to the next slide, thank you. Um, these are just some of my favorite websites that I like to share with new students. So Cal Central, which you saw, our new website, which we just launched. Um, a lot of the questions that are in the chat, you will find the answers to on the newly admitted students FAQ page that's listed there. Funding Your Future, I highlighted this one because this is one of my favorite sites, uh, pages, because we have videos on this page that um, talk about all the things I just shared with you. So appeals, cost of attendance, how do scholarships play into your financial aid? You're gonna find videos on this page that can be really, really helpful and take a little more time than I have today um, to go through all of those details. So keep that in mind. The last thing I will say is there's a forms website on this page. It does say verify my FAFSA, but I wanna be clear that the forms page is available for all eight applicants that file either a FAFSA or a DREAM Act application. Where can you find us? So, we have an office, which I'll we'll talk about in a moment, um, and how you can reach us, but we're also in community with you. Um, as Ruben and Yuki were mentioning at the beginning, we partner with all of our um, colleagues in CE3. So our weekly advising um, locations are listed here. And then you'll probably see me or folks from our, my team um, joining you in lots of different spaces over the next several weeks. Note the website at the very bottom. We are gonna be available on Cal Day from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. You'll find more information in your um, map portal, but please take a screenshot of this um, because that is the link to get in touch with us um, on Saturday, April 24th. And then um, the next slide, this is, so Cal Student Central 
is the physical advisor space for you to ask all of your questions related to financial aid, billing, and registration. This is how you find us. Um, it's studentcentral.berkeley.edu is our website. If you go to services and support that's circled there in red, you will find more information on phone calls, how to put in a case, or um, visit the virtual front desk, which is staffed by our amazing work study students who can answer general questions. I would just ask that you be patient with us. This is a very busy time um, with all of our new admits and our current students. And then just before the start of the semester is also very busy. Um, and then if you have anyone that is supporting you through this process, it's important to make sure that um, once you become our student, we are required to protect your information per law. And so um, it's important that you grant us permission to speak to whether that's a parent or a sibling, a spouse, a, a counselor, whoever that might be that is supporting you through all of this, you want us to speak to them. You do need to, to grant access using the delegate access option in Cal Central. Um, if you click on your beautiful picture in the corner, you'll get to profile information under privacy and permissions. You'll find delegate access. Pick a code phrase that you will both remember because if this person calls or emails and wants to support you and ask questions, we're going to ask for that code phrase. And if they don't know it, we're unfortunately not gonna be able to provide any specific information about your financial aid or registration or um, grades or anything else that you wanna grant them access to. So please do that. Um, I will continue to answer questions in the chat and I am right at 15 minutes, Yuki. I have 15 seconds to spare. All right. Thank you, congratulations. We are humbled and grateful to you for applying to Berkeley and thinking about us. Um, and congratulations, thank you. Thank you. This so is much. where we need like DJ, like buns, like pew, 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 and like <laughs> crowd sounds. That was amazing. Thank you so much, Sylvia. Thank you so much. And we know y'all that was a lot of information and a little bit of time, probably new terms and, and photo snapshots and things like that from Cal Central. Um, we will have time in our Q&A. We see some more questions coming in about finances. Sylvia will still stay on for our interactive Q&A portion. So if there's follow-up questions, feel free to submit those through the chat as well. Um, so we could take a, a quick deep breath together. <sighs> I know this is a lot of good information. Y'all are getting your questions answered and you probably have more questions as well, which is our goal of today. We wanna to get you thinking outside the box about what your needs are for to be successful in your transition coming into the fall. So we have an amazing lineup of some dynamic, powerful, super inspirational student leaders who are involved in EOP services and programs um, and come across all different types of majors and backgrounds. Um, and this is really the highlight of our program this evening, y'all. We want to give space for our student leaders to talk about their experience. They were in your shoes not too long ago um, and want to offer some words of wisdom and some learnings along the way in the Berkeley journey, right? We, we cannot promise to you all that your, your time at Berkeley is going to be easy. There will be challenges and highs and lows, but our, our, our goal and our invitation is for you to, to experience these challenges in community. Um, and learning from the offerings of those who came before you. So I'm gonna invite our panelists to join um, and I'll pass it over to Pedro first. If you could just introduce yourself with your name, uh, pronouns, your year and major, and what is one word that describes how you felt or that moment when you received your offer of admissions to Berkeley. So Pedro, go ahead and start us off. Hello everyone. I'm happy that you all are joining us today. And um, yeah, my name is Pedro Rodriguez, pronouns he, him, his. I am a second year and I am studying sociology and I am minoring in Chicano studies. And I'm from Delano, California. And one word to describe um, how I felt was uncertain. And yeah, thank you. Thanks so much, Pedro. We'll pass it over to Raylan. Hey guys, I'm happy to be here. My name is Raylan Aguado. I use she, her pronouns. I'm a fourth year and I'm studying media studies entrepreneurship. And one thing to describe how I felt is honestly nervous. I was so nervous of like being able to afford college and all of that. And honestly, finding the space of EOP really alleviated those concerns. So happy to be in community. 
Nancy Valen will pass it over to Bonnie. Hi all, thank you all for tuning in. I'm honored to be a speaker for today's event. My name is Bonnie, I use she, her pronouns. I'm a fourth year student studying material science and engineering. I'll be graduating this spring. Um, and the one word that to describe how I felt was stressed. Last but not least, Amber. Hi everybody, I'm so happy to be here. My name is Amber Goring. I'm a first year, I use she, her pronouns. I study sociology and one word to describe how I felt when I got into Cal was gracious. Thank y'all for the introductions. Um, I think a lot of the words that y'all shared match that first word cloud that we saw, right? You can see it's a mix and kind of a hodgepodge. There's excitement, there's nerves, there's some fear and anxiety. Um, so just the relatability of the four of you all and your courageous vulnerability, we really appreciate that. Uh, my first question, I want to go back to Pedro, and can you tell us a little more about that experience when you got your offer of admissions to Berkeley? Like, what did that mean for you and your family? What was going through your mind as you were making um, some of those decisions and questions that came up? Talk us through it. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, my name is Pedro. Um, yeah, and so for me and my family, it was a huge risk to attend UC Berkeley because I felt as if I had, if I had more to lose um, if I went, um, I obviously would lose time and I would lose money. And if I dropped out, I felt like I would disappoint everyone who had um, supported me in my education. And it, it is hard to leave. Um, I'm from the Central Valley, so um, Berkeley is like four hours away from me. And I've never really left the Central Valley. I'm like used to this. Um, agricultural and this like community and on um, the Bay Area and cities it's like a big city and I don't really I've never really been there so it was really a, a big change and um, when I left there was a lot of guilt and there was a lot of criticism for leaving I know that some people thought that like oh I'm too cool I'm too good for them and like because I got accepted and then I also felt guilty at the same time because um, I was leaving and they um, obviously <clears throat> I helped them you know I was like the translator and stuff growing up and um, I honestly would recommend for students to when they because these are difficult conversations to have and um, I think it's important for students to talk to their parents and to be able to communicate with them like, yeah, I'm going to college and I won't be able to really help you as much right now. Um, but I will once I um, eventually graduate, sorry. And um, once I eventually get that high paying job, hopefully, and I could come and help you even greater than I can right now. And um, yeah, I, I think it's important to identify the relationships that we have. And if some if the, you know, there's always going to be people who are who are going to try to like hold us hold us back and there's going to be people who are always going to want what's best for us and I think it's important for us to identify who is going to support us and identify um, what it is that we really want in life but yeah everyone is different not everyone's going to want the same things from life and do the same things and yeah so when I got accepted into Berkeley I was nervous um, because there was a part of me that I was afraid of failing right and um, I remember when I got accepted, I didn't post about um, my acceptance letter. I, um, I was uh, really afraid. Like I only told people if they asked me and um, that was pretty much it. I didn't go like have a big post and celebrate. And um, <clears throat> I often told myself that, that I, I um, didn't need it to be easy. I just needed it to be worth it because um, I know Berkeley was Berkeley was gonna be really hard. I was, I um I struggled in high school, so obviously I couldn't imagine going to, to um, UC Berkeley, an institution like that, like this huge and worldwide that I um. I wasn't really confident, and um, yeah, I'm from Central Valley, and um, representing Delano, <coughs> I come from a community with little to no resources. Um, and higher education is not really encouraged. I remember my parents would always like, I guess um, my family, they would really um, try to get me to work and try to like 
get me to like, oh, you have to be a hard worker. You know, um, they didn't really um, value education. Obviously my parents didn't have an education. So <clears throat> it was honestly something they never understood. But yeah, that's how um, I, I felt. And that's kind of where I'm coming from. And um, Berkeley never came to my high school. Nobody came to, to try to recruit me. Nobody told me what Berkeley was, kind of like Ruben had mentioned. I didn't know what Berkeley was. Um, I just knew it was um, like, um, I Googled it and it was like one of the, like, I guess, most um, ranked, highest ranked colleges, uh, universities. And I mean, I guess it was pretty good. I um, didn't really know. So yeah. And um, I say these things to, to show that if it sounds, does this kind of sounds like you, then I, I think that you deserve to attend UC Berkeley. And if you don't think you deserve to attend UC Berkeley, you're wrong. Um, luckily for me, I didn't, I didn't, I wasn't really the smart kid. I, um, I had to study every night. I was like, if I didn't study, I failed the test. And I wasn't a good test taker. And I had to work hard to get the grades that I got. And um, I wasn't even the smartest kid in my like high school with like 300 students. So it wasn't really like, I didn't really have the ambition to be like the top of my class in this university. And um, I, I recently realized, I guess, um, that my past experience, experiences, they, um, they still impact me today. Like the way that I, um, that I grew up learning. Oh my God, what's going on with this? But yeah, the grade that I grew, I, ended, I grew up learning was um, um, like, I remember I, my parents would force me to read these books and like, like do this math. And I remember <clears throat> I would be crying because they would yell at me for not understanding and the tears would come on the paper. And um, yeah, I, I never knew that that impacted me and that still impacts me today. And um, if that sounds like you, I, I highly recommend that you go to the DSP um, office. They, um, they will, you know, <laughs> listen to you and they will get you connected to the resources that you need to go to. And um, yeah, some of you probably are different from me. Some of you are probably at the top of your high school and um, you're convinced that your GPA determines your success or your intelligence and your worth. And also, I think that that's not true because um, uh, it's hard. It's really different um, coming from, from um, high school or into university like Berkeley. <clears throat> I, would, I, would say, I would say to take the minimum units required and just fill it out. And um, honestly, I think it's important for you to do this to protect your health because your health is on, honestly going to, to be um, more valuable than your education. So much wisdom, Pedro, like, wow, that was a, a mini keynote in itself, just in the opening. But what I really appreciate some of the themes that you talked about, right, is that coming into Berkeley, into university as a first gen student, there could be a lot of fears and doubts and reservations, right? Of like, I don't belong here. I feel like this might've been a mistake. Not having anyone in your immediate family who's gone through that journey, right? Like, how do you blaze that trail? And how do you figure out a system when there's no blueprint? We kind of describe it with the analogy of, it's like you're, you're building a bike while you're riding it at the same time. So I think if you had any connection points with Pedro's story, right, know that you're one of hundreds of students in this incoming class who are probably navigating some of those fears, doubts, and questions. And that EOP is a space that wants to invite those to, to help think through how we can set you up to be successful and normalize it as well, right? Sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. And that's what EOP, what CE3 is here to walk you through as well. So kind of going to some of those themes that Pedro spoke about, I want to also pass the mic over to Bonnie. Um, Bonnie, you're getting ready to graduate in a couple of weeks, which is amazing and fantastic and exciting and probably nerve wracking all at the same time. Um, take us back to that moment four years ago, Bonnie, when you got your offer of admissions. Um, what do you wish you would have known then that you have learned and know now? If there's any advice you could give yourself or your family members as you were navigating that decision? Um, what have been your, your deepest learnings in these last couple of years? Yeah, for sure. Thank you so much, Yuki. Um, hello, this is Bonnie speaking again. 
Yeah, um, I would like to mention that the picture in the slide of me um, that you see is taken four years ago in the summer that I was accepted to Cal. And so you can compare that picture to the person on the screen right now um, that you see virtually, um, potentially some of the changes that went through these four years. Um, and so some of the things I really wish I had known um, was that there are a lot of resources here at Cal that will help you, that will guide you, that are meant to be there for you. And so I, I hold a lot of regrets in the sense that I wasn't aware about certain resources at UOP, UOP STEM, the Career Center, um, even within my own major department, some of the opportunities there. I was not aware of them and I also didn't actively use them. And so I would like to congratulate every single one of you for attending this webinar because you took a huge step uh, just by attending because this is how you are going to make your informed decision of whether or not you would like to SIR to Cal. Um, some, some major factors that I thought about um, when I was deciding to come to Cal was major, my major, what I was going to study. Um, a large part of me accepting my admissions to Cal was that I got into the College of Engineering studying material science. And I knew I wanted to be in somewhere in the engineering field. And so major, the fact that I was accepted to this major in this college was a driving force for me to accept. Um, but I urge you to check your college requirements, check your major requirements before you SIR. Is this really what you want to study? And um, potentially how difficult will it be switching majors or switching colleges even um, if this if the major that you got into is not necessarily the one that you want to study um, because you're coming here and getting an education if you're not happy with what you're studying then it's going to be a difficult ride for you <laughs> um, the other thing I want to mention is your financial situation um, coming from a low-income background um, there was a period of time where I wasn't even certain I would I wanted to go to college. Um, my family's family's my family's financial situation was entirely the best, and I was coming to a decision of whether or not I would go directly to the workforce after I graduated high school. And so I also I I want to mention that I I re really recommend you to apply to scholarships, see uh, check your financial aid package, make sure that you are somehow getting some funding or some help or potentially some loans that will get you through um, you know, paying off your tuition because the college is a very expensive investment and the numbers do rack up year by year, semester by semester. Um, yeah, that's basically my spiel. Um, is there anything I missed, Yuki? I think you hit it all right on the head, Bonnie. I, I really wanna double down on your comments about finding a major that makes you happy. The average university student changes their major five to seven times, y'all. And you'll, and that's okay. Like we want to normalize that from the beginning. If you're on this call and you're not sure what your major is, you're coming in undeclared. That is okay. That's perfectly fine. I was undeclared as a first gen student. I didn't even know what a major was. Okay. That's how out the loop I was. Everyone was talking about, I'm intended this and that. So those are things that we wanna help you explore in your first couple semesters, right? You've heard Pedro and Bonnie talk about, you know, finding a balanced schedule and exploring classes that really fit your interests. Your major is not your end all defining factor that's gonna to equate to your job and your salary. Those are a lot of myths that we really wanna debunk from the beginning. If you're not happy in these classes, right? That's something that we wanna unpack from day one because you're gonna be the one doing the readings taking the midterms, doing the projects, right? And we know that sometimes there's different family expectations or, or external pressures. So we just really wanna name that and lift that up as you all prepare to make your, your transition to your first semester at the university. I'm gonna pass it over to Ruben um, to ask some follow-up questions to Raylan and Amber. Absolutely, y'all. Uh... So we're gonna keep um, the conversation going here in community and move us to the next question, which um, the next question is to continue this discussion really centered in the student experience. So I'm curious to learn from you all, how have your EOP identities as first generation, low income and or historically underrepresented students shape your transition to Cal and your over, overall student experience? Um, so that we can 
really help folks think about normalizing some of the things that come up in this transitional period. So inviting you all to reflect on your transition coming into it. So we're going to go to Raylene and Amber. So passing the mic to you all uh, to bless us with some of your wisdom. Thank you for that, Ruben. I can get started on that. I think honestly, for me, it powered my drive each and every day in regards to knowing that we have to work 10 times harder because the opportunities and the playing field is just not the same. Like kind of sharing the same intention of sentiment as Pedro and Bonnie, like I being low income and being first generation, like I didn't know how to fill up the dream aid and all that stuff. And I didn't as an AB 540 student, like college was like so far-fetched for me because I just kind of knew like when I got accepted a lot of people you know kind of like why aren't you a success and I'm like I don't know how to pay for college so just like seeing that big like money on like the financial aid was so daunting to me you know and it kind of almost like hindered the success of how how far I've come but like realizing that that's okay and I think like you know pivoting the way you look at things I think like a lot of it is just your mindset into things like I can it's easy to think that like okay we have it harder maybe just give up but then you also have the choice to rise above it and show people that no I deserve to be here and I have fought for every space I've been a part of and like you know that my voice is valuable in being heard and I think that's something that has powered me as being like low income being first generation and historically underrepresented all of the three um I think as I go to Cal like knowing that then yeah, like I have to work harder, but I don't mind if it means that I'm doing it for the people that came before me and the people that will come after me to set an example that we deserve to be here and that, yeah, like the space is for us. And I think for me, like going back to my Cal experience, I remembered when I first got accepted to Cal, I went to EUP four times. <laughs> I drove up, I'm from the East Bay. I live in Union City, 45 minutes away. My mom was so annoyed, she's like, you're going back again? I'm like, yeah, I have to ask. I found this like new resource, met with Erica a couple of times during the summer before I even seared. And then I found so many resources. And I and I think like for me as a person, like being that I was always, always like on survival mode, right? I was like, didn't know like how to pay for anything and all that stuff. I had to assure that I was gonna survive. And my biggest fear was that I was gonna attend and like not finish because of finances. But after I went to, EOP and USP and connected to like the transfer center and all these things like I found all these resources and it alleviated my concerns and I think that's one thing I'd like to pass forward is that yes it might be a difficult journey or it might be a little bit harder but self-advocacy will get you in a long way and you'd be surprised and how many people and resources and spaces are willing to help so yeah hi guys uh this is Amber talking and for me, coming to Cal as an underrepresented population on campus, it's definitely something that has affected how I go into all of my classroom settings. Like coming to Cal, knowing that it is a historically white institution, I knew that I would face different issues or different things coming in and knowing that uh, the black population at Cal is less than 5%, I just knew that um, I would have a different experience. And as I came in, that definitely affected me in classroom settings or noticing that I'm the only face that looks like me in a class or there's very few that looks like me. But uh, like Raylynn said, uh, the different resources that are available for students like me, like EOP, and I'm also an African-American initiative scholar. So those communities have helped me along the way. They've made me feel comfortable. Even though the population is small, I know that there's a community there for me. So coming to this school, I knew that there would be problems, but a lot of them were alleviated through EOP and through the AAI, AAI Scholars Program. And just knowing that you're not alone um, through any of this, there are so many people who want to help. And again, I'm a first year, so this is, I'm still experiencing everything right now and I'm going through a lot of the same things that you guys are going through even though I've been here for a year um but these these programs are here to help you know um but as a black student it it has been a little hard just to be honest um like knowing that or seeing that I'm one of a few faces in a classroom but also knowing that I can get through it and I'm not alone those other few faces are here for me you know and especially um with online learning it's a lot different but 
um, it's, you're not alone through any of it. So that's what's been keeping me going as I transition to college life. Yeah, thank y'all so much for, for sharing uh, those offerings here in this space and with folks. Um, and just wanna just wanna live for folks that as we talk about transitions, that some of us, as you all are pointing out, and even in the previous rounds, are lifting the fact that we're not just going through this transition by ourselves, and that it's also our families, our loved ones, and people that are in close relationship with us that are experiencing their own transitions as we're transitioning. So just want to name that and lift that for the folks that are listening, who may be in support of the students, um, that you all know that we are also including you all in this journey of transitioning. Let me move us to, to the next question here, which is, I would love if we could have a conversation about your experiences navigating remote learning in this last year of the pandemic and your experience in this remote context. We know that uh, although the majority of students are being invited to in person in the fall, there's still going to be some classes that because of the size of them, they're going to have to be remote, right? Thinking about the classes that are 200 and over. But also, I want to be intentional about naming and lifting our disabled community, immunocompromised folks who have responsibilities that they may not be able to come to in person classes so that we can address what does it feel like to be in this remote setting. So Amber, do you mind kicking us off on that one as well, just to lift that experience as a student that in your first year you came in and this is the only experience that you've had? Yeah, of course. Um, like you said, this is this has been my only college experience. And when everything, when the pandemic first started, I was still in high school. So it was a really big transition for me to go from high school online where I have about 30 kids in my classroom, actually even less, sometimes 10 would show up, to coming to Cal and having about 100 plus 200 students in a in a uh, virtual space so completely honesty com complete transparency it was difficult you know going from that space where everyone knows you at school and all of your teachers have seen you in person to a whole new chapter of my life but i'm doing it online and i was still at home at the time so i was still doing that so it was difficult and i think one of the biggest things i had to learn right away was that I had to be accountable for myself. Because in high school, like I said, your teachers know you, the staff may even know you, the, the principal, everyone is checking in on you. But in college, you are doing things for yourself. You know, it's a brand new sense of independence and self drive that you have to acquire. And it's not, it's it's not easy. Um, I definitely learned the hard way some things that I had to be on top of my stuff myself. No one was going to call me and say, hey, did you go to class? Did you do your homework? Like I really had to find it within myself to be on top of things, but also not going through it alone. Um, connections are really, really big uh, with virtual learning because everything feels so disconnected. It can be easy to just like shut off and really isolate yourself. And I know because that's honestly how I was first semester. First semester, I was like, oh, I got it all on my own. You know, I didn't, <laughs> you know, I had to make those connections. I had to talk to other students. I had to meet with EOP counselors. And when people started reaching out to me, offering help, I had to say, okay, you do need the help, you know, and really take those offerings. And also connecting with other students is huge, even if it's just like, a classroom relationship where you say, hey, did you get this assignment? Or keeping each other accountable is really, really helpful. And knowing that there are other people who are going through the same things that you're going through. So making those connections in class with other peers just on campus is so important. And like I said, it's hard because trust me, my first semester, I was just like, uh, I don't really want to talk to people. It's so hard for me. But the more I opened up, the more I felt a part of Berkeley. You know, I, I, I began to feel like I was a college student and not just doing school online by myself, you know, so making those connections is really huge for um, virtual school because it's not easy. But the more you, support you have and the more you connect with others, you won't feel as isolated. And just knowing that 
this is something, even if it wasn't virtual, this is a big step, you know, coming from high school to college or transferring into college, regardless of where you were before, it's something new. So making those connections and knowing that even if you're struggling, it's okay, because I promise you, you guys aren't the only ones. So yeah. Beautiful. Uh, Yuki, how do you feel about us moving forward, just looking at the relationship of time and time space continuum um, and moving us to the next portion, which would be introducing our faculty speaker for today? Does that feel good for you? Sounds good. Beautiful. I just want to have a moment of celebration, y'all. Can we clap it up, give some snaps to our students that came today to share their stories and their wisdom? Y'all are absolutely magical and amazing and luminous. Thank you so much for being willing to share your stories. We do want to remind you all that we have a whole community session, discussion, Q&A later on in the program where we're just going to be able to vibe with each other. So I'm excited for us to continue that conversation then. But for now, I want to lift uh, brother, older brother, Dr. Pablo Gonzalez. This is a living legend, y'all. Sylvia and Pablo used to make all kinds of trouble back in the day, and they're just making better trouble to now. So this is people's people. Dr. Pablo Gonzalez is a uh, professor, lecturer in the Chicanx Studies Program and Ethnic Studies um, Program Department. All of those things come together. And for many of us first generation students, we experience mixed emotions when receiving our admissions to Cal. Often we can be intimidated by the academic rigor of a research university. So we want you to know that Berkeley has renowned faculty who care about you and want to be part of your support network. Why? Because they come from our experiences. Really the only difference between you all right now and these faculty is time. They're just older, but you all are just as brilliant, just as capable, come with an incredible life journey that can lead you all to that. So today um, we have a message that Brother uh, Pablo made for the community. So I'm going to go ahead and move us in that direction to get the wisdom from Pablo here in this space for everyone to listen in on. Uh, greetings, everyone. I'm Dr. Pablo Gonzalez, a continuing lecturer in Chicano Studies and Ethnic Studies. Um, I'm a first generation Chicano from Berkeley and Richmond, California. And I wanted to speak to you all today about my educational path. I hope it resonates with you. For, um, and first, I want to congratulate you and your family on your recent successes. I know that we are living in difficult and uncertain times. Many of, many of us have families and loved ones who are impacted by COVID-19. And I know that you and your families have so many things on your mind. I'm confident that though we can, uh, I'm confident that though that we can and will continue to imagine and build the types of worlds that everyone can fit in. It is not only your challenge, but our challenge to make those worlds livable for us and for future generations. Again, my hope is that my experiences will resonate with you and your communities. And then once you arrive at UC Berkeley, it will be a way to invite you to meet and build with me. First, a little bit about myself. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a first generation Chicano the middle child of three from the East Bay area of Northern California. My grandparents and parents migrated to the United States in the mid 1960s from Macambaro, Guanajuato, Mexico. My grandfather was a former bracero agricultural guest worker who found factory work in the steel mills of the Bay Area. He brought my grandmother and their daughters to the Bay in order for them to have better ed educational opportunities. My mother would arrive to take some classes and receive her GED later in the 1970s. For most of her life, she worked in the sweatshops of the Bay Area as a seamstress. My father, on the other hand, arrived to the United States in the late 60s, first as an agricultural worker and eventually as a welder in the East Bay Area. I attended Berkeley schools and excelled at an early age. Yet, as I mentioned to many, I knew very little about the university. Can you imagine being raised in Berkeley and not really knowing about its most famous landmark, the University of California? Well, that was my reality. In fact, I had more family members working as janitors and service workers at UC Berkeley than as students. My older brother was the first to attend UC Berkeley 
and it was my first real experience with the university. The old Shattuck Avenue boundary for many Mexicans was slowly broken by my brother and cousins. I graduated from Berkeley High School and was fortunate to have people believe in me and offer me admissions to UC Davis through former EOP affirmative action programs. After my first year, I transferred to UC Berkeley where I gained my degree in Chicano studies. If you think imposter syndrome was something new, I reflect on my college experience in the mid 1990s, being the son of parents with questionable residency status, being brown, black, red, and many of us face the stigma of being perceived as unworthy due to our admissions as affirmative action students. I can still remember my former dorm roommates constantly telling me how I took the place of someone more worthy. I will tell you now that you were admitted not only on your accomplishments, but as a reflection of your family and community struggles and accomplishments. Much goes into getting you where you are and your ability to see yourself and others will help you transition to UC Berkeley. Never feel that you are alone. Many of us resonate with the sense of isolation and we have consejos or advice to cure it. One, being the first doesn't mean being the last. Pave the way for others. Acknowledge those that have come before and set your sights on new horizons. Two, doors may be shut, but those, are, those that are open are there for you to transgress. There are many thresholds that you will cross. Being a border crosser, being a border crosser is not a criminal act. It is an act of survival. It is an act of love. Cross the many borders you will face with confidence and humility. You will find lifelong companions and allies as you cross. Those doors that are closed, let's make sure they open. A campus like Berkeley will seem closed, but trust me, there are more of us than they are of them. Three, walk through Sproul, the halls of your dorms, the streets of Berkeley with your head held high. Acknowledge people. Don't be afraid to bump into people. We are in a moment of social distancing and even though we take physical caution, we must never lose our sense of being convivial because that is an act of building community. Four, be open to new ideas, but be cautious of superficial analysis. You will be exposed to materials and ideas that you have never heard of before and that you will question. Good, be a person who walks while asking. Be a person who seeks the resources to understand and when they are not available, that demands that they be available to you and others. It will help you identify ways of understanding our lived realities and encounter those realities of others. Finally, as I pursued a PhD at the University of Texas at Austin, I knew I was the first. The first to pursue a graduate degree. The first to live outside of the Bay Area. The first to accomplish these aspirations. Many of you are the firsts. And although that comes with pressure, know that we expect mistakes. We expect the homesickness. We expect those calls to friends to see how they're doing. We expect those frequent trips home. We even expect you to doubt yourself. These doubts are all part of building and sustaining the most valuable resource you have at Cal, and that is community. I would not have finished my PhD or be at UC Berkeley without a community that listens to me, cares for me, and wants me to dream big. Although we are not physically able to meet with you today, I will conclude with the message I repeat to anyone and any group of students that I speak with. And that is that I make a commitment to you to have my door open for you to come and ask questions, to come and introduce yourself, to share who you are and who you are becoming, to gather tools to transform our world and to help build others. If you're not able to come by, then it is my task to accept your invitation to meet you where you feel safe. Thank you for your time and go Bears. Thank you all so much for, for um, listening with your mind, hearts and bodies. Uh, greetings. Uh, greetings everyone. To, uh, I'm Dr. Uh, Big Pablo Brother Pablo. 
Yuki likes Pablo so much that she tends to double play that video often. So shout out to Yuki for just continuously blessing us with the, uh, with uh, Pablo's energy and wisdom. You know, we're reaching the the, the time where, where we want to synthesize a little bit all of this great abundance that we are bringing into this conversation. At this point, y'all, I want to make something very, very clear to every single one of you. And again, whoever else is listening uh, next to you and whatever language you are speaking, because some of us tend to be translators for our family so that they know what is happening in this moment. I want to make something very clear for you all. No one made a mistake in admitting you to UC Berkeley. We have one of the most robust admissions processes in the world. We had record setting application numbers this year. You all didn't just survive a pandemic, you applied and got into one of the most competitive and prestigious universities in the world during a forking pandemic amidst all of the harshest of climates and conditions, you applied, you were reviewed by multiple admission staffers and readers, and they didn't just say, holy shit, this is an incredible person. They said, this is somebody that can come to Berkeley, thrive in Berkeley, graduate from Berkeley, and further the legacy of Berkeley of being a community shaper, a community leader, and a world transformer. That's who every single one of you in this space is. We want to make that very clear for you all to celebrate that and to lift the fact that some of us sometimes have this like imposter syndrome or this negative self-talk or these little voices inside of our heads that telling us I'm not smart enough, or I don't really belong in Berkeley, or like someone else should take my spot and all that kind of bullshit. Sometimes it's humility. And sometimes it's just a hot ass mess that comes down from multiple years of colonization and imperialisms and our mind, heart, body and spirits. But today, today, in this moment, no one in here was accidentally admitted into Berkeley. No one was accidentally invited to this event. So we want to celebrate you. We want to lift you. And we want to make sure that you understand this. It is our honor and privilege that you will consider joining our family, not the other way around. You all are the gift. You all are the privilege. And we are here to affirm to you all that people just like you not only have come into Berkeley, but have come, graduated, thrive, and now we are in these leadership roles, making sure that this place is better than it's ever been, just so that you can have a healthier, better, and more successful experience. So with that, I'm gonna check my mic and pass it over to Yuki before I continue catching the spirit and take us to places that we don't have time to go to this evening. Thank you, Ruben. You know, I, I, I know that we went over so much information and feelings and storytelling in a short amount of time, and we appreciate y'all just staying present with us virtually. Um, we know that you have so many amazing, fantastic choices and options, right? You all are the best of the best. You're incredibly talented and resilient and hardworking. Um, and we just hope that if you choose us, if you choose Berkeley as a home, as you choose EOP as a home away from home, um, it will be our honor to serve you in this journey. You don't have to have all of the answers figured out right now. I know as, as I say that, we got a lot of questions coming in through the Q&A box and that's awesome, that's beautiful, we welcome that. Um, but EOP is here to be your home away from home, your foundation, a place of community and belonging um, where you can be in community with folks who get it. I think that's one of the joys of being in this space is you don't have to over explain yourself or your background of being first gen or low income and what it feels like to be a student of color um, in spaces that always, don't always reflect you or your stories or your ancestors. Um, so this is an early invitation. And if you choose us, it's our honor to, to serve you and support you and love on you along the way. This is just a snapshot of our community. Um, and we know that change can be overwhelming 
change can be intimidating, change can bring up a lot of fear, uh, but we hope that today brings out a level of confidence and also ownership for each and every one of you and your family members that you own this experience that you worked so hard for and nothing was handed to you. Um, so we wanna close this portion of our event with a couple important reminders. We're still gonna stay on for about another 20 to 30 minutes for the live Q&A part. Um, that's my favorite part because we get to interact with you all more directly and answer a lot of your great questions. So if you're able to stay on, please just, just pause with us as we transition to the Q&A. Um, but some important reminders, uh, EOP is, is partnering with the Financial Aid and Scholarships Office tomorrow, Wednesday, April 14th and Thursday, April 15th for dedicated one-on-one -on -one virtual advising appointments with our newly admitted students. So this link, feel free to take a picture of it, a snapshot. It's also on our new admit welcome page so you can find it on our website, but we're offering brief 15 to 20 minute appointments. If you have unique questions that maybe we didn't get to today, okay? If you made an appointment already and we answered one of your questions, great. We just ask you to consider canceling or rescheduling to create space for other students. Um, but this is a one-on-one -on -one opportunity to connect with a staff member from Berkeley to overview your financial aid package. Um, if we don't get to all your questions today, if we miss some, we're so sorry. We wish we could stay on here longer, but we are offering the CE3 virtual desk on Thursday, April 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. You can go onto that link to find the Zoom link. Um, and that's where you can learn about the range of different CE3 programs and services um, as well. And then if you do have to transition off right now and you can't stay with us for the Q&A, we do have a webinar evaluation form that we kindly ask you to fill out and share your feedback about this event. What worked, what didn't work, what would you want it to see or hear more of so that we can continue improving and serving our future generations of EOP students. We will be raffling off some gift card prizes for those who do submit a response. So please, please, please share your honest feedback with us in that sense. Um, one other final EOP reminder, a lot of students are asking in the chat, how can I meet with y'all? When can we connect with EOP over the summer? As a gentle reminder, um, you can connect with us for academic counseling appointments after your May 1st SIR deadline. So after you accept your offer of admissions to Berkeley and once you complete your Golden Bear advising modules. That will be sent to you via email and on Cal Central in the early summer. And then we'd love to connect with you one-on-one -on -one to make sure that you're set up for your July enrollment appointment. Um, and then we'll also have a host of different programs and workshops over the summer to welcome y'all into the fall semester. Um, when we are back in person tentatively for the fall, the EOP office is located on the south side of campus on Lower Sproul in the Cesar Chavez Student Center. So that's where you can find us. We have photos on the website. You know, it's a big campus. It could be easy to get lost, um, but just also want to put that out there for when we return as well. So with that said, we're going to transition to our live Q&A portion. Yeah. Can I do one quick plug? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Sylvia. So if you can't get to one and two on that list and, and you need some financial um, support, remember we are going to be available on Cal Day from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Check your portal. We'll make sure that the information is available and the link is available for you. Thanks, Yuki. Thank you. So again, there's a lot, I know there's a lot of programming coming up. There's Cal Week, there's you know financial aid appointments, there's programs. It could be overwhelming. So take your time sifting through some of these links, bookmarking, if I were y'all, RSVP for all of it and go to what you can and watch the recordings afterwards so you don't miss anything. So we are gonna take a quick two minute stretch break so y'all can get some water, use the restroom, move around if you need to. At eight o'clock Pacific time, we're gonna start our Q&A portion where we can answer some of your questions. We see a lot of questions about financial aid and housing and enrollment. So we'll take a two minute break um, and come back to get started with that final portion of the event. I'm so excited for the Q&A, y'all. It's about to be super lit.
Ruben for bringing the vibes and the tunes. We really, really appreciate y'all for staying on. I know some folks had to transition off because it's getting later in the evening. I know we had a later start than we had hoped, but we're going to go ahead and transition into our Q&A where we can um, just go through some of the questions. I know we're getting a lot on financial aid and housing and things of that sort. Um, so for the interest of time, let me share back my screen. I know a lot of participants have already submitted a lot of great questions so far, and we appreciate that. Um, we had some other agenda items, but we're just going to jump into it to make the best use of everyone's time. So uh, the first question that I see is just around general EOP services. Um, there's a student asking about when can I reach out to an EOP counselor? Can I contact y'all during the summer before freshman year? Yes, as we mentioned, we'll be available to support y'all in your transition starting this summer. Um, we just really ask that you, one, accept your, if and when you accept your offer of admissions, right? We're assuming that you choose us um, after May 1st. And then also completing your Golden Bear Advising modules. That's gonna go through a lot of great information. Then you can start using our schedule of virtual appointment online to connect with the EOP counselor. And then there was another really great follow-up question around just our general counseling services. So we are, as academic counselors, we are a soft spot between um, licensed professional counselors and also academic advisors. So we are not, we are not licensed and trained um, in the, the mental health diagnosis field, but we are trained in general counseling skills and socio-emotional support. So if you're feeling homesick, if you're experiencing issues with your roommate, um, if you need some advocacy and support with your instructors, that's also something you can come to EOP for. It does not have to be something purely academic related as well. Um, Sylvia, if you don't mind, I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself because we have a load of different financial aid. Ah, popular topic, yes, of course. You know, gonna, that's why we're glad we have this expert with us. So um, the first question that we see, Sylvia, a student shared, when looking at grants, some say conditional. What does that mean and what issues would need to solve so it doesn't say that if it is an issue? So how do I get my, my money from conditional to being official? Actual awards. That's a great question. There are typically two reasons um, that your financial aid awards would be conditional. The first could be that you were selected for a process called verification, um, either by the federal government, the state government, or us as the institution. 
Um, so you might see a task in Cal Central asking you to um, submit more information. And once you've accepted your admission, you can start that process. Um, if that doesn't apply to you, then the other thing it may be is um, related to residency um, for our dream applicants. Um, so once you decide that you want to um, join us this coming academic year, there will be a task that the registrar's office will put on that is called the Statement of Legal Residence. Um, and this is just where we um, officially determine your eligibility um, for in-state resident um, tuition. And so those are the two reasons, um, one or the other. So you would want to take care of the tasks related to whichever one applies. Thank you, Sylvia. Uh, another popular question is about SHIP. A lot of students asking, and for, for those who don't know, SHIP is an acronym that stands for Student Health Insurance Plan. Sylvia, can you talk about, you know, should students waive out of this? What are the things that they should consider? Um, is there additional financial assistance for low-income students to help cover the annual SHIP cost if the student does choose to go through university health insurance? Yeah, so um, one important thing to know is that the university does require all of our students to have health insurance. So either your own that has comparable coverage or the university plan. Um, and you will be charged for the university plan up front. And so it's important for you to wave out if that's not something that you're interested in. And my cat may join us in a moment here. Um, and um, it is possible that you um, could receive additional financial aid for your health insurance. It's the type that will vary from student to student. You can um, go to the financial aid website, financialaid.berkeley.edu, and type in SHIP, S-H-I-P, um, and you'll find a uh, frequently asked questions page on SHIP um, that might help you determine what type of aid you might be eligible for, um, for health insurance. Thank you, Sylvia. Another you. common question is from some of our out-of-state students. Um, so just clarifying for out-of-state students, are they eligible for need-based scholarships and grants? Can out-of-state students only appeal their financial aid after they accept their offer of admissions on May 1st? Great questions. Um, so again, it's important to remember that um, out-of-state students are not going to be eligible for need-based Berkeley grants and scholarships. Um, and that's not a campus decision, that's a, a UC system-wide decision. Um, so appealing in that case isn't going to result in grants and scholarships from UC Berkeley. So it's important to know that ahead of time. So May 1, before or after May 1 is, is really not the question. Um, it's more of would I be eligible anyway as a non-resident student? And the answer to that is unfortunately no. Are there options like scholarships that non-resident students should consider or research or look into to maximize their options, Sylvia? For sure. So we strongly encourage our out-of-state students to be researching scholarships. And, and remember that it would need to be a significant amount and you wanna plan for the next several years, right? Um, the worst thing that we would want to have happen is that um, an out-of-state student joins us and then can't finish and we can't provide additional funding, that's not good for anyone. Um, and so, yeah, outside scholarships is something that um, all students should be looking for between now and when they finish their degree. Thank you so much, Sylvia. We're going to take a, a transition to some of our housing questions. I know um, as we transition to primarily in-person instruction for fall, there's a lot of good questions. Uh, and curiosities around housing security. You know, what happens if I don't get offered um, a contract through the residence halls since housing is not necessarily guaranteed for our new admits at the moment. So I wanna invite Ruben and Daisy to share a little bit um, from your own personal experiences. What was it like as a student when you were transitioning from living in the dorms to seeking off-campus housing, do you have any tips or recommendations that our new admits and family members, they could be proactive in researching um, and looking through over the summer? Do you wanna go first, Daisy? Um, yeah, I can go first. Um, hi everyone, Daisy here. I think for me, my while he's going into Berkeley as a first year, um, I was 
very <laughs> grateful enough to be um, into like a, a theme, a special theme program housing. So I was part of Casa Mora, which is a housing residential hall specifically for Chicanx, Latinx identifying students. That's where I really found my community. Um, I found my roommates that thankfully have become some of my best friends and stuck with me through the entire undergraduate career. Um, but I will say coming into Berkeley, I did not know how difficult it was going to be to find housing. One, the Bay Area in full transparency, very expensive. Um, I didn't even think about that before, like thinking about coming into Berkeley. And I definitely don't wanna scare any of you, um, but again, just for full transparency as well. Um, and also it was a difficult experience for me also being a first generation student. No one taught me how to apply for apartments. I didn't know that I was gonna have to give like my social and they were gonna look at my credit um, and all these different kind of like requirements. Um, and one of the things that I did benefit from for being an EOP student was being part of like the Berkeley Student Cooperative. Um, I was able to live in the apartments um, in Rochdale specifically. Those are more specifically for like low income students that aren't able to afford like full rent at Berkeley. And through that, I was able to, you know, kind of budget in more money to be allocated towards my other needs. Um, but that specific experience was different of its own as well. But again, just very thankful for that as well. But that is um, kind of like a perk that you get with being part of an EOP, you get priority in the wait list. But I will say this, even though you get priority in the wait list, that wait list is really, really long. There's a lot of students. Um, I think that's something that I wish they would have been more transparent with me is like how long that list was. And again, for full transparency, I didn't get into the co-ops or was able to kind of get an apartment until my third year living at Berkeley. Um, so my first year lived in the dorms, second year apartment, and then until my third year, I was able to be placed into the co-op system. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about my experience. So definitely encourage y'all to think about like housing um, and how expensive like the Bay Area is when making those decisions. But again, like EOP is here to support you with any questions that you may have. And again, I don't wanna scare any of you all, but for full transparency as well. And I'll pass it on to you, Ruben. Can I add something really quickly, Daisy, just as a follow-up that you shared? Um, really just appreciate your honesty and talking about just the different housing transitions in your years at Berkeley. Y'all, we're not sharing this to scare you. Like Daisy said, we're sharing it to prepare you in advance of making some of these important decisions. And we really, really encourage folks to make parallel plans, right? So don't just bank on one option, especially for housing. We wanna share all the different resources available. Um, like Daisy mentioned, EOP has a partnership with the Berkeley Student Cooperative. You can start applying to the Berkeley Student Co-op for fall and getting that EOP priority verification even now. So you, that's one requirement. You don't have to SIR to, to get the priority EOP verification. If you contact us by emailing the new admit email address um, with your name and student ID, we will put you on that spreadsheet. You can move forward with applying directly to the Berkeley Student Cooperative and paying their non-refundable application fee to get that process going so that you're in the queue and that you have those options in advance. The Berkeley Student Co-ops have different options, whether it's apartments, houses, and they are considerably more affordable compared to residential halls or other off-campus offerings. Um, but EOP is also here to connect you with other financial resources. So the financial aid office also partners with student leaders to offer the housing security deposit scholarship. So those are things that we wanna plug you with in advance to help alleviate the financial burden as you go into the fall semester. Um, Ruben, are there things you wanna add just from the basic needs lens and thinking about ways that students and their family members can prepare for the housing transition um, and, and housing security going into their first year? Yeah, absolutely. Number one, I think the the timeless wisdom at this point that that I believe the quote says the rent is too damn high. So I think that that is that is just a universal experience, right? Like, let, let's get prepared. But also, y'all, if y'all are considering any UC campus, <laughs> all of our UC campuses are in the most expensive real estates of California. The UC is bougie like that. We like the fancy real estate. So wherever you go in the UC system, I mean, think about uh, La Jolla, UC San Diego, think about Santa Barbara, right? Like all of these locations are in that. So there's a normalcy to that. 
rather than get stuck on the pricing of housing, which is an inevitable aspect because we live in California when you're coming to the UC, I would want you all to focus on as soon as you are ready and you feel moved to enroll into Berkeley or wherever you want to go, do it. Do not hesitate. Submit your enrollment and submit your housing uh, paperwork application so that you can get priority in a dorm so that your first year you can have that dorm experience. And then trust us, come to us, come to EOP, come to financial aid, come to the basic needs center. If you need any guidance or coaching in terms of preparing for your second year housing, which will be off campus and the location of your choice. The only other thing to live here is that we now have housing specific basic needs awards. What does that mean? If you're struggling to come up with your safety deposit to be able to move into your housing location, we now have a safety deposit support fund that you can tap into. And should you find yourself in some kind of tight situation where you give the majority of your money for the safety deposit in the first month of rent, and you don't know how you're going to make it in your second month of rent, we also have a rental assistance program at Berkeley to support you with your housing needs. So we just want to make sure that you all know that as you have these questions, you have places to go to. And should you need resources, there are resources available to support you. Thanks so much. I want to uh, transition to hear from some of the student voices now. Um, a lot of the new admits are curious about just emerging in the Berkeley social network come the fall. Can any of the student panelists share uh, what was your experience like building new friendships and relationships? I know coming into a big campus, some of us, you know, still operating in this virtual space. Um, what was it like and what advice you have for students who want to build those connections? Are there different community spaces or organizations or events that you all have been a part of that can help folks in building that community early on? So whoever wants to, to go at it first, feel free to unmute yourself. I can go first if nobody, if you guys don't mind, but hi guys, my name is Raylan. And for me, I think the biggest advice that I will like tell anyone is that be passionate and be intentional in what you do. Cause I think that transcends in everything that you do. And a lot of like the clubs that I'm a part of, I think that what's rooted and underlined like in all of them is like everyone's passionate in the work that they do. And if you're not like it shows. And I think that's like how I found communities because like these are people that share the same mission, the same values as I do. I will say like in full transparency in regards to going to that it's hard to join clubs on campus just because like, especially business clubs, that's kind of more my niche, like business entrepreneur club. Clubs are very cutthroat. Like a lot of them have like two to three interviews. They're worse than actual like career interviews and you need resumes and like a LinkedIn and all these things. But I think just like finding people who will help with you, who will help you through their application process, they're more than happy to help. In regards to that though, like most of my best friend have come from like the student groups that I'm a part of. so. I'd say just apply to everything and anything as long as you feel like you see yourself in there and self-advocate for yourself as well. Thanks, Raylan. Any other students want to talk about what your experience was like building new friendships and relationships at Cal? I'll go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, it's it's something where you where you feel kind of alone. At least for me, I felt really alone. I didn't really see people that really understood or experienced the same things. But um, it's important for you to find safe spaces, spaces that, because um, Cal is really competitive. And you know, the, it's, it could be toxic for you sometimes and impact your, your own health. And um, yeah, that, that's something that I have experienced. And um, it's important for you to find um, a community where you're going to be supported, where you feel safe, and um, um, if you haven't really looked into any um, um, clubs or anything like social, I recommend, I think there's um, a website, Sprout Club. Um, it's like for Berkeley, um, just search it up, Sprout Club, and maybe Berkeley, you could probably find it. But those are different clubs on campus. You could search up for um, what you're interested in. If you're interested in, I think sports, or um, I guess, um, um, recruitment and retention, it could be um, whatever it is that you're interested in. 
but yeah that's something where you could at least you know have an idea but also something you could also do is search up um facebook follow follow i guess all the follow eop follow um um on whatever social media you have instagram follow all of that you know you'll you'll honestly be up to date because social media is something that is really um important and you know um that's something where you could i guess you could be scrolling you know looking at a meme and then you'll find you know the where your future job or your future um whatever you're gonna do and um yeah that's the power of social media and um yeah um that's all i have I also wanted to add on to what Pedro said. Um, I think as people like look for communities and their belonging on campus, like honestly, there's like a club for everything and anything. You'd be so surprised. There's like clubs for like left-handed people all the way up to like different niches and careers. So I think like definitely doing your research on what's out there. And then like, as Pedro said, like social media is so powerful. So follow like all of the newsletters and like their social media. So to make sure that you don't miss any events. And I will say like the people that you meet at Cal are like lifelong friendships. Like they're either people that are gonna be shared your network, people gonna be advocating for you and speaking to you about opportunities. So definitely like immerse yourself in different spaces and you know, to cultivate also like self-discovery and just finding your place and belonging at Cal. Thank you. I'd love to hear maybe from Amber since your entire first year has been remote and virtual. What what was it like for you branching into finding communities and building relationships and study groups and things like that? Yeah, um, I kind of touched on it a, a little earlier, but definitely it was difficult for me um, reaching out and socializing because I'm a pretty social person and pretty extroverted, but online, it just wasn't the same. And I'm more of a make a connection in, in person type of person. So um, it was difficult. But for me, finding community was through different events. Um, and I'm also um, a part of the Afro floor virtually. So making those connections, um, going to different club hosted events helps getting to see different people in the community. And if you're not a person who wants to join clubs, then just going to these different events. Like the other day I went to a poetry slam and it was um, put on by a on campus fraternity and having different people just sharing their experiences and you can make connections through things like that and um, there's also different emails that EOP sends out with different things going on and different panels and ways to get involved evolve, involved that way um, but like uh, Pedro was saying social media is huge and following other people who say who have like Cal 20 2025 in their bio. That's a big way that I met a lot of the people that I do know um, in my, my class, just uh, seeing people on social media. And that's the only way we could meet, you know, because everything was strictly online last year. Um, but yeah, just putting yourself out there, even though it's hard going to these events, trying to make connections, because the more connections you have, the more community you build and the more secure you feel in your experience. So yeah. Absolutely, the power of social media and virtual connection, we know it's not the same as in person, but those are still proactive steps you can take. Um, another plug for our EOP new admin resource guide, a lot of these organizations that the students are lifting up and talking about are highlighted there. So if you go on our welcome page, click on the resource guide and sift through, go to their websites, find their social media, sign up for their newsletters so that starting in the first day of fall instruction, you're getting all the communications and you can pick and choose. Um, the LEAD Center is also a great campus organization that serves as the umbrella for all of our student orgs. So if you're trying to find a professional organization, an organization based off of your passions or hobbies, um, the LEAD Center is a great place as well. Um, I wanna invite Bonnie, if there's any reflections you might wanna share about just how you found community at Cal. Are there any specific spaces or organizations that you've been a part of and what it was like uh, joining those, those communities? Yeah, thank you, Yuki, for inviting me um, to speak. Um, I would also like to mention on top of clubs and virtual events, uh, you should proactively attend those, um, that there are also a lot of safe spaces on campus in terms of counseling. I am part of an AAPI um, group counseling um, group that meets once every week. And uh, we really find a community, I, I like found a lot of connections with people that are, you know, within the same ethnicity, um, that have a lot of 
you know, that share a lot of struggles in terms of, you know, race, ethnicity, imposter syndrome. There's a lot of topics that we touch upon. And so I encourage you to, you know, find these safe spaces and to proactively interact with the people in there. Um, and that will make your life at Cal a little more, uh, you know, easier. Thank you so much. I have, we're coming down to our last couple minutes, but I do want to squeeze in one really great question for the students. Can you all talk about how you've navigated the competitive academic environment of Berkeley? So we know it's a research university. It's a prestigious institution and that can bring some fears and reservations. How have you all navigated the academic landscape? Where have you found support? What, um, positive habits and strategies have you gained along the way and some advice that you can give the newly admitted folks who might uh, be curious about that. I always love this question because this pause always happens. And, and now I've learned to enjoy the pause because people be like, shit I don't know <laughs> but this is like what I'm learning but like just just to, just to give us a little alley-oop there for for that conversation so I want to I want to be very clear with you all that that when you come to Berkeley there's a difference of the academic rigor just meaning the pure understanding what's going on and then there's the community that you have as you're navigating that and you can have as lonely of a journey as you want to, meaning that you're not going to talk to nobody, you're not going to have any study groups, and you're just going to do it on your own because that's what works for you. And if that's what you want, you can get that kind of isolated, solo, lone wolf experience if you want. But there's also the complete opposite of that, which is there are study centers, there are study groups. There, is, there are spaces specifically dedicated to focus on the academic coursework that you're taking, the Student Learning Center is an incredible space that you're gonna be able to create community with other folks that are coming to tutoring. Something to share with y'all to demystify, whereas in high school, the people that go to tutoring are the people that are like failing or struggling. When you're in college, people that go to tutoring are the ones that are doing the best in the class, are the ones that are, are putting the most work to make sure that they're supplementing their, their classroom time and their study time. The last thing that I want to lift and pass the mic to the students here is I do want to lift for you all prioritize office hours. I think a lot of students come to Berkeley and they don't go to office hours, which is one of the biggest mistakes that you can make. You can have some of the most phenomenal leading scholars in your field be your professors go to office hours and don't just go to talk about academics. Ask them, yo, where did you grow up? What made you want to become a professor? What have you learned about learning and teaching from being a professor? What are your goals in this class? And what are tips and tricks that you have so that I can fulfill those goals? Have those kinds of conversations with your professors because then you have a better relationship with them. And then ask them, what class do you think I should take next? Or what internship should I apply for? Or do you know of any like conference or meetings that are coming up that would be good for me to go to? So that that way you're befriending them and they become your coaches and your guides beyond just teaching you the specific classroom. Y'all that hustle and those kinds of relationships will open up doors that you don't even know exist. Thanks so much, Ruben, for sharing that. Um, we're coming close to time. So if there's any students who wanna share one little other tidbit around just navigating the academic landscape, I'll leave the, the, the mic open for a second. I can get that started. Um, definitely going on to what Ruben said, I shared that same like kind of idealism when I got to Cal, like I thought like everyone's super smart here, like no one's gonna help you. And like in full transparency, like I heard like horrors about like people like clearing Google Docs and like people like, you know, like deleting notes and all these things. And I was so terrified to come, I was like, what if I'm not smart enough, right? And like the imposter syndrome really like sat in and I was like, I don't know, like I was like so used to like, it was easy to like go to tutoring and all these things, but like coming to Cal, it was like almost like, you get kind of scared to ask like for help because you're kind of affirming that maybe you're not good enough to be at Cal if you're asking for help. But honestly, when I've kind of like got over that and I asked for help, I found so much community in regards to like, 
I remember that every time, like before the semester starts, I would reach out to like the class of 2021, like Facebook pages and be like, hey guys, like who's taking this class, create group chats and then find people who's taking the class. And throughout the semester, those are like my pillars of support. We would like talked about like, you know, meeting up like on Sundays to study or even like having like a live Google doc that we share. And I think most often than not people are off, like are willing to help. And there's people that share the same thing as like you're feeling like if you're feeling like you're not ready for a test or like this test might be too hard. There's someone out there in your class who feels the same way. So it's all about just like reaching out and filling those gaps of support because whatever you might know better, like they might know like better too. And just like finally tying in those gaps. So definitely like I found community in that, like in affirming that, no, there's, it's, there's not nothing wrong with asking for help. And if ever, like there's beauty in that. And there's also like in the status of Travis in Lower Sproul, there's also like um, tutoring services and they're really helpful like you could come in to walk in and schedule and those have been very helpful as well just to add something really quickly really quickly uh on to what Raylan said about building community that's really really important but also knowing your personal path at the end of the day you're the one working towards your degree and only you only you can really affect that you know so it's although it's hard try not to let what others are doing get in the way of you uh, obtaining your goals you know I had to learn quickly that I can compare myself to others and I can say oh I'm not doing as well in this class as maybe some others are doing but at the end of the day I only have to worry about myself and you really can only focus on how you are doing and not let the noise in your head overpower what you want to accomplish so yeah so beautifully said Amber right that the the curse of comparison is so prevalent at Berkeley and you will compare yourself to everyone else's timeline and path and that will just take away the joy from the present moment. So again, just doubling down on what Amber said, focusing on your path, focusing on your path and community and knowing that there are spaces and systems here to support you and your family and making the best decision for yourself. So in conclusion, we do want to make some final reminders for you all as we close out our time together. Thank you all just in general for your grace and patience with us. I know we went a little over, but we really wanted to get to your important questions. We see some of your questions still coming in and they're important to us. So we encourage folks to utilize some of the links here to connect with us further to keep the conversation flowing. So as a reminder, you can go onto this website now, EOP New Admit Financial Aid dot you can book me com to sign up for a 15 to 20 minute appointment starting tomorrow afternoon and Thursday morning. We also have the C3 virtual desk. That's Thursday, April 15th from 6 to 7 p.m. where you can meet other CE3 staff members and students to learn more about their experiences and their programs and services. And then we also invite y'all to share with us some feedback about tonight. What went well? What would you have wanted to hear more of or less of? in this webinar evaluation link. We'll offer some raffle prizes for those who submit responses. Um, and then last, but most certainly not least, if ever you get lost or stuck or you're for, you forget how to find your way back to one of these questions, just go to that final website on the bottom. This is our new admit landing page for EOP. It's linked publicly on our website and on the email that we sent you all. This is where we're gonna host the archive of today's recording, the financial aid appointment signup links are there. We have our new admit resource guide and a ton of other different videos and resources that will help you get the, the answers to some of your questions. So we are so immensely proud of you all. We are moved to be in community with you. Um, again, we know we went through a host of information and links and acronyms. So take your time processing it. It doesn't all have to make sense and click right now. Uh, more than anything, we want you to know that there is a spot available for you at Berkeley and we are eager and excited and overjoyed to welcome you and your family members in making this very important decision. Uh, please do not hesitate to reach out to us if you need support. Uh, that's exactly what we're here for. And we hope to see you in the future and go Bears. So that concludes our program for today. Thank you all so much. And thank you to all of our speakers and panelists. We super, super appreciate it. So we will allow folks to log off. We can go ahead and stop officially recording. Um, 
And thank you to our guests who I see y'all exiting the space. We appreciate y'all. Hoping everyone stays safe and healthy. Bye, y'all. Take a shower, brush your teeth before you go to sleep tonight. <laughs>